Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about HP Reliant DL380 Gen 7 server memory upgrades and how to configure the system. To start with, the HP Reliant DL380 Gen 7 is on a memory level the exact same as its younger brother, the DL380 Gen 6. And it's also the exact same as the DL360 Gen 6 and G7 from a memory perspective. So if you're familiar with those systems, you're in good hands. Um, this should be really easy for you. Okay. So to start with, there are 18 DIMM slots. Uh, you can uh, put in one type of memory. It's ECC registered. You cannot put in a load reducer memory, which is also known as LR DIMMs. Um, according to HP's spec sheet, you can put in uh, 288 gigabytes via 18, 16 gigs at 1600 megahertz. However, we've done some tinkering and played around with this a little bit and found out you can in fact put in 384 gigabytes via 12, 32 gigs at 1600 megahertz as well. And you might wonder why can you only put in uh, 12, um, 32 gigs as opposed to loading it all the way up with 18. And that uh, comes into the rank rule and all 32 gigs are quad rank and it basically breaks the rank rule. So as we open it up, I will explain the rank rule a little bit more for you to kind of understand. Uh, but I wanted to just give you the general overview of uh, the system as a whole. So uh, I've already got our, my SD gear on. So you always need to make sure that you have your SD gear on so you don't shock the machine. So let's go ahead and open her up and uh, show you a little bit more about the inside. Well, let me show you how to open it up. Uh, the DL380 Gen 7 is definitely much easier uh, to open then the 380 Gen 6, which uh, had the big bulky riser kind of in the way. Um, so like all you know, uh, servers that are out there, realistically, you just have to make sure the latch is set to unlock, pop it open, and you're in, okay? So we'll move the top to the side. Once you're in, uh, the old uh, setup for the 380 Gen 6 had, as we said, the big riser that came over it. Um, and it, to even get to the air shroud and to get to the modules, you had to remove that big bulky riser. So HP made some great improvements, in my opinion, um, as far as just being able to get into the machine. Um, still not perfect yet, but it's it's getting better. So um, as far as this machine is concerned, you don't have to actually remove anything back here. Uh, the only thing that you really need to do is uh, take the RAID out of the way. Okay. So I'm just gonna actually move it right back here. Now I'm gonna put it to the sides a little bit easier. Um, and then the top will actually just pop right up. There's two of these tabs right here. You can just pop it right up. Now I will note on the side, they have the cables running. It is snug as a bug. And you have two, uh, you have the air uh, baffle is legit right on the the modules. I mean, it is, it is super snug. So I just wanna point that out because when you put it back on it, it can be a little bit uh, confusing. You're going, oh man, it just seems a little too close, but that is how it is in fact designed to just to get the airflow just perfect. So uh, right now you'll see we have uh, 24 gigs in here. There are um, uh, six, four gigs. So it's it's really, as far as a performance standpoint, it's not really that good. Um, so a little customer dropped this off, wanted us to upgrade it uh, to uh, 288 gigabytes. Uh, he didn't want to go all the way to 384. 288 was good for him. Um, so that being said, uh, I wanted to just show you a few more things on how to actually pull the modules out and how to configure them. Okay, so you have two CPUs, they're labeled, so CPU1, CPU2. Uh, for CPU1, there are nine DIMM slots. Okay, so if you were only running one CPU, you could not put any memory over here. It just wouldn't register it. You just can't find it, okay? Um, so if you were only running one CPU, everything would go over here. However, with this machine, with procs being, you know, as cheap as they are, we recommend putting in two procs and filling up the whole machine to get maximum performance, okay? Um, so over here, you'll see, because there are only three DIMMs in right now, um, they have utilized the uh, start of the channel, okay? So as we'd kind of discussed, there are nine DIMM slots for the CPU, okay? That means there are three memory channel and each memory channel has three dims and this is important uh, because the whole rank rule that we were talking about so if you look it is white black black white black black white black black so if you weren't sure about the dims you can actually just look at the color coding and you can figure it out or you could go onto hp spec sheet and it'll tell you as well okay um, but in this case so the whole rank rule what it states is that each memory channel can only have eight ranks total. So if you were using a 16 gig 8500 module or a, a 32 gig quad rank module, um, because they're quad rank, 
you will quickly go over the, the uh, eight ranks if you put three of them in, you go to 12. So you can only use two, and that would need to go in the uh, first white and the first black, um, and then you would skip the third black, and then it'd be white, first black, skip the second black, and that's how you would basically load it, okay, if you were using quad rank. Um, in this case, since we're putting in dual rank 16 gigs, we're just going to load it across the board, and it'll be 288, uh, and it'll be, you know, perfect uh, for this guy, what he needs, okay? So uh, how you would uh, take the memory out is fairly simple. Um, I always like to personally hold the module with one hand and then take my other hand to pop it just so it doesn't come flying at you. Uh, it's a little snug back here, so I'm gonna switch and boom, just take it straight out. Okay, pretty simple, nice and easy. Okay, so now that I've gotten it out, I'll show you how to quickly load it. So one thing I do want to note when you are loading this RAM up, uh, you will see right here that there is a notch. Uh, that notch, uh, or also known as a key, is very important. If you were trying to use, uh, let's say, a DDR2 module or a uh, DDR4 module and you're trying to put it into this machine, it physically just would not fit. If you were trying to use a desktop module, it physically would not fit. The key rotates to different places. Uh, the manufacturers have made it that way so that users basically just won't make that error. And it's more common than you would think, unfortunately. Um, so we want to make sure that everyone understands uh, that you have to have the right memory and this is a protection for you, okay? But also you have to make sure because if you were to flip the module around and shove it in there, you could actually damage the module and damage the slot. Next thing you know, you need another mud motherboard and nobody wants that. So you simply just line it up, make sure your key is in the right spot. You'll hear it click in. Okay, you hear the click. And it's fairly simple. Should have actually started on the one that's furthest on the inside because it makes it easier long term so the other one's not in your way. I started backwards, but that's because I was used to using the first channel. So we're going to go ahead and load her up nice and easy. Just keep clicking them in. There we go. Push that one down a little harder than the others. And one thing I do like to note for for customers is that, um, you know, when you're wanting to increase just performance for a number of different applications, uh, memory is the, the quickest way to do it. Uh, with memory, um, you can really increase speed, uh, speed and performance for, you know, file hosting, file sharing, uh, email servers, virtualization, really you name it, uh, all sorts of projects, it'll, it'll be very helpful. Uh, a lot of people ask about increasing the storage, increasing the CPU, uh, what's really kind of the best thing to do. And of course, it, it depends on the situation. I can't just blanketly say RAM is the best, but in my opinion, the CPU is generally so much further ahead than everything else that um, when you increase the CPU, uh, it doesn't really help sometimes, uh, depending on what you have, of course, uh, because it's just so much further ahead of everything else. When you increase the RAM, uh, it really does do some wonders. So. One of the things that we recommend doing first, and it's really cheap nowadays, DDR3 has gotten so cheap for a few hundred bucks, you, you can max out a whole machine and just like increase the, the performance and, and the life expectancy just goes so much further. So uh, it's one of the things that we always recommend because getting a whole new server sometimes, getting a, a IT guy to come in and do a, a whole new install and remap everything, it can just be uh, kind of a pain. So uh, that being said, this is a really great band-aid that can get your life of your server several more years uh, until you really need to kind of make that jump and go to, you know, a Gen 8 or a Gen 9 or Gen 10 or something like that. So um, anyhow, now I'll show you how to put it back together. And this is the part where I was saying that it is really snug. So you have to make sure it's all the way over. And that part, I, like I said, I'm not a huge fan because you kind of got to push hard on this right side. Uh, put the RAID back into place. And put the top back on. 
boom, we're done. So thank you very much for your time and appreciate you stopping by to learn a little bit more about the HP Proliant Dell 380 Gen 7. Uh, if you are looking for any memory upgrades for yourself or your company, please feel free to reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thank you very much.